I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which the National Association of Federal Retirees Ottawa Branch Office is located is traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. On behalf of the branch, I am pleased to welcome you to today's active webinar to help you get ready for spring. And I'd like to welcome our presenter today, Meg Stickle-Croker, owner of local business AIM Fitness. Meg will guide us through a 45-minute full-body workout with plenty of different options so you can follow along at your own pace. Voyez noter que le webinaire sera présenté en anglais, mais la participation bilingue est toujours encouragée. I want to give a special welcome today to anybody here who is not yet a member of our association. We hope these webinars will inspire you to join us and to our members, we trust that they will encourage you to maintain your membership. There will be a question and answer period at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions for Meg, please type them in the Q&A box on Zoom and she'll be able to answer them at the end of today's session. I'll now turn it over to Meg. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, Paul. Nice to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for coming. So um, we are going to be doing a full body workout and we will be using weights and a resistance band. Now, if you don't have weights, what you can always use um, is anything you have around the house like canned goods or even water bottles, as long as they're full. <laughs> uh, now, before we do that, I curious to see and to hear what your favorite hobbies are that you're focusing on this spring. So I'm going to ask that we have our poll um, to be put here on the screen and I invite you to vote on the poll to let us know what hobby you are looking forward to most in the spring. So I'll read the choices. Uh, we have golf, gardening, pickleball, hiking, or cycling. So feel free to Cast your vote. And this is fun for us to see what everyone else is, uh, is focusing on this spring, but this also gives me an idea as to um, what types of exercises that I'll be, I can share with you based on your hobbies. All right, so give you another minute to do that. All right, so here we go. Here's the results. We have 38% of people who are excited about gardening, 24% who are excited for hiking, 19% cycling, 14% golf, and 5% pickleball. Not too many pickleball players here. All right, maybe we'll change your mind after today. <laughs> All right, so I encourage you to stand up. We're going to get started with a warm up. Right, so you can move that chair off to the side. We'll use it a little bit later, but let's get started with my stick. All right, so let's begin. Now make sure you have a little bit of space beside you as you get warmed up. We're going to start by marching on the spot. And it's the tall shoulders back. Meg, your, 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 your sound fades a little bit, so if you could move a little bit closer to the microphone. Oh, sounds good. Actually, I can connect my mic, and I just want to make sure I'm full screen for everyone. Okay. Okay, this should be better. Give me a thumbs up if this is better. Yeah, all right, awesome. All right, excellent. So let's march on that on the spot. Good. So it is important to warm up before we do any of our outdoor hobbies. Oftentimes we think, oh, I've just got a sliver of time. I want to go for a hike or, oh, I can do some work in the garden. But it's really important to warm up our body, warm up those muscles before we do anything. So I'll show you a really simple warm up that you can do um, before you get going. So what we want to do here is we want to take a side step and swing those arms. So standing up nice and tall, 
stepping from one side to the other. And warming up before we do any of these activities means fewer aches and pains, and hopefully your back is not as sore. So that can be a big concern for a lot of people. All right, now let's do a few more. Let's do five and four and three, two and one. Now take those legs nice and wide and we're going to be twisting, twisting here at your waist. All right. This is a really good way to warm up the back, warm up your spine and focus on your breathing here. Breathing in and breathing out. All right, now this is option one. I am going to be giving you lots of different options so you can make sure you're exercising at a level that feels good for you today. So option one is keeping those feet flat on the floor. Option two is lifting the heel, adding a bit of a swivel, going from one side to the other side. Good, keep going everybody. Breathing in and out. Lifting that heel, excellent. Now, if you have osteoporosis, just watch that you protect your spine. So you'll wanna do this option, not twisting at the spine. We wanna protect your spine. All right, and you'll feel this not only in your back, but also in those legs as well. All right, let's keep going for another five and four and three. And two, and one. Now keep those legs as you're doing. This time I want you to reach. Imagine you're reaching for something. So lifting that heel, reaching to the side. One arm at a time. Good. So you may notice, even as we're warming up right now, that your body temperature it's getting a bit warmer. You may notice that your breathing is changing and then you may feel like you're loosening up. So those are all good things, all good things we wanna notice. Three more. And two. And one. All right, the next one we're gonna do is with one leg in front of the other. So separate those legs and we're gonna be lifting your back heel and the front foot. Now, if your balance is a little bit off today, do this one right beside the chair, so that way you can hold on. So lifting the toes, lifting your heels. If you don't need that chair, then you can add the arms, reaching in front as your heel lifts, reaching back as your toe lifts. All right, so this is a really good way to wor warm up the legs, especially the back of the legs. And in general, for most people, our, the backs of our bodies can be quite stiff, sometimes very tight. So doing these mo motions can be so helpful just to relieve that tightness. All right, so option one is this, continue on. Now option two, we're going to reach up and then we're going to press the arms back. So lifting the heel, reach up, lift that front toe, Press the arms back. Now make sure you still have lots of space in between those feet. And you'll feel this one right up the back of that leg. Very good. And this specific stretch I would recommend you doing before you go out on the golf course, before you go for a hike or a walk, before you go and do some gardening. All right, let's do three more. Notice that stretch. Two. And then one. Let's keep that heel lifted, uh, toe lifted, heel on the floor, and then reach down towards that foot. So you should really notice here, the front leg is really stretching, bending into that back knee. You can place your hand right here. Now we're gonna stand up and we're gonna do this again. Bend and lean. 
Rise up, reach for that toe. This is another one where you can hold on to that chair for balance, or like I'm doing, have that hand right on your knee to be able to support you. Good, and just watch that back. We wanna keep your back nice and straight. All right, let's do a few more here. Last three. Good, and two. Excellent, and one. All right, good. Now we're gonna change legs, opposite foot in front. And we'll do that same thing, lifting the heel, lifting the toes. All right, now use that chair for balance if you need it. We all have one side that's more flexible and where we tend to feel a little more comfortable. So if you do feel like you need to hold on, do so. All right, pressing back, lifting the heel, lifting the toes. Inhale and exhale. All right, good. And this may feel more natural on one side. <laughs> you know, this side for me doesn't feel as natural, but uh, it's good and important to exercise our, our uh, both sides of the body equally. Because that can help to prevent falls and especially tightness too. Let's do three and two and one. Now we're going to take this one a little further. So remember, we're going to rise right up, lifting the heel, pressing the arms back, hinging from the hips so that we can really reach towards that toe. Good. Now I will mention something else. If your feet are one right in front of the other, it's going to be more challenging. Make it a bit easier. Take your feet a little wider. It's, consider this like train tracks. You'll feel more stable on your feet with your feet wider. Wider stance. All right, good. Let's do a few more here. Three. I'm sure you're feeling this one, right? Up the back of the leg. Two. And one. Now we're gonna rise up and reach for that toe. Hinging from the hips, reaching down and then rising back up. And so the other leg is bending as we lean, straightening up, bending forwards. Such a good stretch for the back of that leg. Make sure you don't bend that knee. Good. Breathing in and out, another three. And two. Good, and one. All right, wonderful. So let's bend at the knees, kick those legs back, and we're going to squeeze those arms back. All right, so it's a good way to stretch out those legs. Also a good way to think about improving our posture, squeezing back. All right, good. Let's keep going for five and four and three and two and one. Good, all right. Now another aspect that we should really consider is being quick on our feet. And I I'm sure you know what I mean. It's easy to lose our balance, especially if you're walking or hiking and there's uneven terrain. So what I want us to do now is we're gonna be doing some different movements to really get those feet and those ankles moving. So we're going to be starting by stepping out, out, in, in. You can place your hands on your hips as we do this one. Take a step out, out, in, in. All right, so there's a bit of coordination that's coming up. Bit of coordination. Okay, to step out, out, in, in. All right, from here, bring those hands together. We're gonna stir the pot as we do this one. Out, out, in, in, stirring the pot. 
out, out, in, in. Three more. Two. And one. All right, so we're gonna step out with the opposite foot this time. Out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. Changing the arms, reach, reach, in, in. Out, out, in, in. All right, excellent. Let's do three more. And two. And one. All right, very good. Now the next one I have for you involves balance. And this one will be also helpful when you're walking, when you're maneuvering, maybe across, uh, maybe in the forest. And what I want you to do here is bring your arms out to the side, using the chair as an option. We're gonna start with a tap. This is called the hands of the clock. So we're gonna be tapping out and then tapping back. All right, we'll do that same side, tapping front, the side, out to the side, and back. Good, one more time. And really think about doing a very light tap just with the toe. And back. Good, we'll do the other side. So same thing here, tapping front, side, and back. Now this one, I'm gonna give you some options. This is really good for balance. This is two. And one more time, front, side, and back. All right, here's our, our options. Option number one was the tap. Option number two is tapping, but then lifting the knee in between. Tap to the side, lift the knee, back, and lift the knee. And then I'll show you option number three, where your leg is gonna be lifted the whole time. Bring it in, take it out, not touching. In, back, in, and then down. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do three more per side. You get to choose your option. I will switch it up a little bit here so you can go along with what I'm doing or do your own thing. All right, so three more each side, here we go. Option one is the tap, side, and back. So keeping a slight bend to that knee. Option two is this, tapping and then lifting the knee. Side, and back. And then option three was lifting, keeping that leg up the whole time. Good, really challenging that balance. Great, all right, let's walk that out, stretch it out before we do the other side. Okay, so let's do the this side as well, your option, your choice. Now remember to keep breathing, keep the shoulders relaxed. Good. Excellent, one more round. I'm gonna do the harder one here. Good. All right, wonderful. And let's walk that out, stretch those legs. Excellent. Okay, so from here, we're gonna be moving to some exercises you can do with your resistance band. If you've got some water, I encourage you to have a sip of water as well. And on that note, when you are doing your outdoor hobbies, your activities, remember to have a water bottle with you. Now you don't need to guzzle the water, but it is really good to have a little sip throughout the day, especially if you're out in the heat. All right, so we're gonna do some exercises with the band. I've got three planned for you and they replicate different movements that you'll probably be doing this spring. So what I want you to do is I want you to lay that band right on the floor. All right, so you're gonna hold on to it. it. Should be out in one line. And I want you to stand on the band with both feet. And take your feet a little bit wider than your hips, okay? 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to reach with the opposite hand. So reach right across your body. And we're going to be using this arm for the first exercise. You can place your hand on your hip or pull that chair around if you want to hold on to your chair. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be bending into that arm, lifting that elbow as you pull the band. So I encourage you to hold on to the band so it's tight, so you can really feel that arm working. All right, so here we go. And the reason I want your legs wide is because we are going to be shifting from side to side. All right, so here we go. So for all of these exercises, I do encourage you to do between 10 and 15 repetitions. And today, because most of these will be standing exercises, this is considered a weight-bearing workout, which is ideal for anyone with osteopenia or osteoporosis. All right. Very good. I'm sure you're feeling this in the arm already. Good. And for anyone who's going to be doing any raking, this is a really good movement to do before you go out. Let's do four. And three. Two. And one. All right, now stay where you are. Don't move yet. We're going to switch to the other hand. Okay, feet can be a little bit closer together. Hold on to that band so it's nice and tight. Hand on the hip. And we're going to be doing a lifting motion, a pull. As you do this, lift those elbow, the elbow nice and high. And your hand should be lower than your elbow, lower than your shoulder. And if you're tempted to lift it higher, then move that hand lower on the band and you'll have to work a bit harder. All right, so if you have osteoporosis, we really do wanna protect your spine. So that means we don't wanna be doing any side bends or twisting because it is easy to fracture if your bones are really weak. So this is the recommendation I give for those of you with osteoporosis. Now, if you don't have osteoporosis, you can follow along with this next option. We're going to be doing a side bend. So still lifting, still pulling, but we're leaning to the side. And this move always reminds me of the song, I'm a little teapot. <laughs> All right, very good. So you should be feeling this one right above that elbow. Right in the shoulder area, working the arm. And then if you're doing the side bend, you'll feel it right in the sides of your torso. Good, let's do another five. And four. And three. Two. Good, and one. Excellent. Okay, now stay where you are. I've got our last exercise in this position. So we're going to be now focusing on our core. Now, anyone who is a golfer, gardener, um, playing pickleball, there's a lot of twists. As you know, you have to lean and reach, maybe reach above your head or a little lower. So our core muscles are really uh, part of that movement. They help us move from side to side and keep us stable and also maintain our balance. So this next exercise is gonna be really helpful for you. So we're gonna start by holding on to that band. So it's really close to your hip. And we're going to be pulling the band from the hip area right across towards your shoulder, crossing the body. So hip right across to shoulder. So once again, if you have osteoporosis or a bad back, face the front of the room no major twisting, this is fine. You'll still feel this in the core. Option number two is to do a little bit of a twist from one side right across to the other. Yeah, continue to pull on that band. Very good. So tighten up that stomach. Pull your belly in as you do this one. All right, good. So this is called the wood chop the wood chop exercise. Now remember to breathe. Sometimes we hold our breath when we're concentrating on what we're doing. So really be intentional about breathing in 
and breathing out. Good. All right. Feeling this one. Let's do three. And two. And one. All right. Very good. Let's circle your shoulders backwards. All right. That's awesome. So we're going to do those three exercises on the other side. So you can step off your band and place it the other way. All right. So remember, keep those legs nice and wide. And we're going to start by reaching right across opposite arm. Okay. Hand on your hip. And same thing here. We're going to be bending into that elbow, shifting from one side to the other, bending into your knees too. If you're not feeling much after doing this a few times, walk your hand a little lower. All right. All right. Breathing in, breathing out. And you may notice that one side does feel more natural than the other. Already mentioned that's completely normal. Most people I talk to uh, do mention the same thing. One side is more their dominant side. They use it all the time, and you're naturally just stronger on that side. All right, so really continue on. Lift that elbow nice and high, getting that good pull. Breathing in, breathing out. Excellent. Let's do another three and two and one. All right. Switch hands. Hand on your hip and we're going to be pulling. So let's pull, lifting up towards your armpit, adjusting the band as needed to make it a bit harder. Okay, so option one is keeping your spine straight, just um, using the arm, feeling it right here, shoulder, feeling it in the back of the arm too. Option two is I'm a little teapot, leaning to the side, feeling this right along our inner, um, inner torso. And this is a part of the core as well. Our core wraps all around our body from the stomach, right to the sides, right to your back. All right, very good. And the good news is the stronger your core is, the less back pain you will potentially have. So a lot of people experience a lot of back pain and tension because they haven't strengthened their core muscles in a long time. So what can happen is your back carries the load and then it's easy to tweak your back and it's easy to pull a muscle. All right, let's do three. And two, good, and one. All right, feeling that, excellent. Before we move on, circle backwards. Lift those elbows, lift your shoulders, circle. Good, and then we'll move into our last one here with the band. So holding with both hands right here at, by your hip. And remember, we're taking that band up and across towards that shoulder. So low, the band should be tight right here, and pull. All right, here's another one where you can shift from one leg to the other. Make sure your legs are wide enough. Option one is this, facing the front of the room. Option two is adding that twist. And think about pulling that stomach in. Good, activating that core. Now you can do all of these motions as well without a resistance band. Maybe you don't have one today, or maybe you are gonna be on the golf course and you think, oh yeah, what was that exercise again? Oh, I don't have my band. Well, you can still do th these motions without using any equipment. It will still be a really good stretch and a really good warm up for you. Three more. And two. And one. All right, amazing. So you can step off the band and we'll move that off to the side over the back of your chair is fine. And let's grab a sip of water.
All right. Excellent. Excellent. So after doing those mo movements, let's do a bit of a stretch. Circle those shoulders and elbows back, stepping side to side. All right, that was great. So that gives you three really good exercises that you can do one after the other. You can always do the replay of this video if you forget the, uh, the exact moves. And then another way to exercise consistently is by joining my membership. The AIM Fitness Online membership has lots of videos, lots of movements like this that are all between 20 to 30 minutes in length. And you can do them easily throughout the day. It's just like Netflix where you can log in at any time of day and follow along with a workout that I've put together. And now for members, get 33% off. So be sure to ask me about that uh, and visit my website for more details. All right, one more stretch here. Let's bring your hands to your shoulders. Leg is a bit wider again, and we will twist from side to side. If you've osteoporosis, do like I'm doing now, just move. So the arms and upper body is moving. Option two is twisting at your waist. You'll be able to go a little further by doing this. And this is a really nice way to stretch the upper back. Let's do three, two, and one. All right, excellent. So we're gonna move to our weights. I've got a few really great exercises that you can do with the weights that can help you to, to build some upper and lower body strength. Now I do wanna mention, I'm gonna do a demonstration here because I see a lot of people lifting heavy things the wrong way. So this is gonna be helpful if you are lifting heavy golf clubs, soil or anything else. So instead of leaning over, rounding your back and lifting, that's gonna put a lot of strain on your back. Instead, I would recommend taking a step forwards, bending at the knees, keeping your back nice and straight, getting down a little further, grabbing that item, holding it close, and then straightening up, okay? So that will keep your, your back straight and it will uh, reduce the extra pressure on your back. So always remember, no rounding and lifting, always take a step, hinge from your hips, then reach and, and rise up. All right, you get to try that again, <laughs> get your second weight. Hinging, bending at the knees, bringing that item in close to you, and then straightening. Okay, excellent. All right, so we're gonna start with some, uh, some bicep curls with a side step. So we're gonna start with our hands facing the front of the room. And I want you to bring one weight right up to the shoulder and then lower the arm down. And then do the other side, weight to the shoulder, lower the arm down. Stepping side to side as we go. Breathing in, breathing out. All right, now as we do this, continue to think about your posture, standing tall, shoulders back. Good. This is option one, one arm at a time. Option two is both arms together. Inhale and exhale. All right, very good. Let's continue, five. Four, and three, two, and one. All right, so this gives us upper body strength to be able to lift heavy things. Another one that's gonna be helpful is to have your weights right in front of your shoulders and pressing those arms right up overhead. All right, so pressing up, straightening the arm as best as you can. See if you can do it directly above your head. But if you've had a shoulder injury, it may look like this. You may not be able to straighten the arm. So just do what you can. All right. Now we're going to add to this. So we're going to start by pressing up. Up. And then a forward punch. And forward punch. So up, up, press, press. And punch, punch. 
Good. Now I'm lifting five pound weights today, and I do encourage you to use anywhere from three, uh, maybe up to eight, depending on uh, where you're at with your strength level. And if you're a regular exerciser, you may be able to go heavier as well over time. But I find there's certain exercises where we do want to use lighter weights, especially if you've had an injury. And this is one of those moves. Anytime you go above your head, you do want to be careful that you don't uh, overdo it. Because our shoulders can be really sensitive. All right, let's do a few more. Good. Two more of each. Press. Press. Add the punch. Punch. One more round. Good. All right, awesome. Now lengthen those arms, move those weights off to the side just for a minute. I find putting them on a chair is great. And then we'll circle those arms backwards. Good. And then let's reach both arms in front and squeeze back. Good way to stretch the arms, stretch the shoulders and improve our posture. Three, two, and one. Good, all right, grab those weights again, grab some water on the way. Okay, the next exercise is for the lower body and upper body. And this one is really helpful if you are picking something up, maybe grabbing something from the trunk or from the ground. So we're gonna start with our legs nice and wide, feet are out to the side, weights are together right in front. So the first part of this exercise is the row. I want you to bend at the elbows, lifting your weights all the way up to your chin, and then lower the arms until they're straight. And again, up and down. Now the next part is bending the knees. All right, so our legs are wide, wider than your hips. And you should be noticing that those thighs are working. I'll show you from the side. You wanna think about taking your hips back behind you. We're hinging at the hips. So leaning forwards just slightly, but I'm looking straight ahead the whole time. All right, so you can imagine lifting up something heavy from the back of your, your car or the ground. Like I talked about earlier, we don't wanna round the back. You'll notice my back is straight. And then we're lifting. Inhale and exhale. All right, so this is a great way to build strength in the lower body and the upper body as well. Let's keep going a few more. Five more. This one also gets the heart rate up too. Four. And three. Two. And one. All right, amazing job, that's great. So set one of your weights down, right on the chair is fine, and bring the chair a little closer to you. We're gonna use it for our next one. All right, now something else we often do is we lean just to pick something up off the floor. So if you're gardening, you're doing lots of bending, lots of leaning. So I want you to bring one foot in front of the other. Hold on to the one weight, use the chair for balance, just in the beginning especially. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be lunging. So I want you to hinge from your hips, bend both knees, and option one is to keep that arm nice and straight. Just the legs are working right here. You'll notice again, my back is straight, hinging from the hips. Inhale and exhale. Good. All right, here's option two. Arm is straight, 
Arm is bent, just like you're picking something up, maybe reaching for a bag of soil, reaching for your tools. Good. Now we're able to lean a little further with one foot in front of the other. All right, another five. And four. And three. And two. And one. All right, excellent. We're going to change to the other side. So move around that chair. Okay, so it's the opposite leg in front, opposite leg back. Now those feet can be pretty close together. If you do have knee issues or any knee pain, you can have your knees and, and uh, your heel actually touching your toe. It, they can be that close together. Um, now, in this case, I'm gonna have my feet a little further away, but it's really up to you. You can play around with that. So our first five that will do, keep that arm straight. Hips are working. You may be feeling this in the knees. And I have worked with many people with knee pain and arthritis in their knees, and they found this exercise was really good for them. They were able to do it, no pain, and it did improve their situation. All right, let's do another 10. And I want you to bend that elbow, lifting the weight. Okay, this is two. Breathing in, breathe out. All right, we've switched sides. So once again, just notice, is this side easier for you or a bit harder? We all have our dominant side. Good job, let's do another three and two and one. All right, amazing job, amazing job. Set that weight down. Good, and let's do a few stretches for the upper body. Hands to the shoulders, circle those elbows back. All right, good work, good work. Notice how you're feeling. Let's do one arm at a time. It's like you're swimming backwards. And then change directions, one arm at a time. And then both together. All right, excellent. Okay. All right, we're doing great. We're just gonna do one more. I've got one more for you that will actually be on the chair and then we'll move to some stretches. All right. So you can have a seat. We are going to be using one weight, so you can lower one weight to the floor out of the way. All right. And what we're going to do here is we're going to lean all the way back against your chair, feet flat on the floor to start. And this one is good for the leg, also good for our core, good for core strength. So what I want you to do is I want you to lift one knee. And as you do so, extend the arms in front right above that knee. Pause and then lower the foot, bring the arms back in and switch sides and lower. So pressing out and as you lift the knee, every time I want you to pull your stomach in. So it's just like you're tightening up your belly. Inhale as you do so. All right, and then make sure you're leaning all the way back against your chair. This one should feel Nice, after all the standing that we've done. All right, very good. So this is option one, alternating legs. I'm gonna show you option number two. We're gonna focus on one leg for option number two. So bring the knee in, arms out like we've done, extend the leg in front, no touching. Knee in, extend that leg out. You'll feel your core working a little bit more for this one. Two more, and one. Good, and lower the leg. Other side, five more here, five. Four, stretch that leg. 
three, two, and one, and then lower the leg and we'll sit up tall. Good, so that's a really great core exercise that you can do on your chair, even on the couch. A lot of people I know, and especially people I work with are not so keen on exercising on the floor all the time. So there's really good ways that you can strengthen your core while exercising on a chair or even fitting it into your day. All right, so set your weight down. And now we're sitting here, so let's do a few seated stretches. All right, I'm sure you're happy for that. We've worked the legs, so let's take one heel to the floor and we're going to be leaning over. Now keep that back nice and straight and then reach with the same arm, reach towards the toe or towards that foot, just as far as you can go. And our goal here is to feel this up the back of the leg. So our hamstring is higher up, the calf muscles a little lower. And in any of our spring activities and your hobbies, usually we are using the back of our body. So it's so important to stretch. So really start to think about exercising, warming up, doing some warm up moves before you do your activities. And then do take the time like now to do at least five to 10 minutes of stretches at the end. And just this week, I was talking to someone on the phone who was saying, oh, Meg, I didn't know I had to do a stretch after I went for a walk or after I did some hiking, but I'm sore all the time. So I said, well, try it out. Try adding in 10 minutes of stretching after your walk, after your hike, and just start to notice if you feel the difference. So I'm excited to hear the difference that she feels. I'm sure she will. Now, another great stretch you can do on the chair is for the, the thigh. So we're gonna turn to the side of your chair. So one hip is on, one hip is off, and then curl your toe under, aim your knee towards the floor, hold on to the back of the chair, and then lean back. Just enough to feel that pull. You want that, that knee to be pointing towards the floor. So this is option one. Option two to deepen the stretch is to reach with that same arm up. Hold it here. Our squats, our lunges, all of that really worked our thighs. And this can give us a lot of relief to do this stretch. All right. Good. So we're going to swivel over to the other side to do the same thing. All right. So curl that toe under, aim the knee down. Hold on to the back of the chair for stability. And then you can lean back just a little bit. You'll know once you've got there, you'll feel that pull. Good, the arm adds an additional stretch. All right, and let's release. Very good. All right, we'll do one more here, one more for the outer thighs. So we can either do option one, if you've had a hip or knee replacement, lean over here. Knees are out to the side. Option two is lifting the leg right across the other and then hinge forwards, feeling this in the outer thigh. This is good if you have any sciatic pain or if you find your hips just get really, really tight after your activities, do this one. This is a good position to change your shoes. So if you're switching shoes, get into this position, hold this one for about 30 to 60 seconds. Now while you're here, we can also circle that ankle. Good. All right, let's lower that foot and we'll do the other side. So again, you can cross at the ankle, holding it right here, or take the leg a little higher. Very good. Now, another time to do this one is if you're in front of the TV or even reading. You can lean your book or your magazine right on your lap as you're doing this stretch or as you're flicking through Netflix. You can also hold this position and then circle. And I find, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, just uh, over 16 years now. I've been in the fitness industry working with adults 50 class and seniors specifically. That's always been my focus. 
And uh, what I found is that as people start to think more about exercising, more about fitting in different stretches during the day and finding different time slots that work, um, they see the results, they feel the results. So I hope that's the same and that's the case for you today, whether you're a lifelong exerciser or whether you're just getting back into the game. All right, so let's lower the leg, feet together and take the knees out and in, easier to do near the edge of the chair. Okay, so flap those wings. You can do the same thing with the upper body. Good for a hip stretch. Good to stretch the upper body. All right, very good. Now, I also want to mention if you do have any questions about your, your health goals, about what you can do to stay active, or if you want to learn more about my programs, I do offer a free 15-minute call. So I'd be happy to touch base with you. So do feel free to uh, reach out and book a call with me. I'd love to help you stay active uh, this spring and this summer. All right, so here's the challenge of the day. See if you can get up out of the chair without pushing into your legs. And then we'll do a few last stretches behind the chair. All right, good. So let's stretch into the upper body, taking one arm right across, reaching for the shoulder, hand to your elbow, and then press that arm across, stretching into that shoulder and arm. And as we do so, take your legs a little wider, shifting from side to side. All right, excellent. And then switch arms, reaching back first, and then other arm comes right across. Hand to the elbow, shift side to side. So I encourage you to notice how you're feeling or finishing up. I hope you're feeling really good, invigorated, energized, full of new ideas and ways to stay active. Good, take those arms all the way back and then look up towards the ceiling. Good, and then bring those hands in together, interlace your fingers, flip those hands and press away to stretch that back. All right, excellent. Let's finish with three deep breaths, hands to your heart. Let's bring those arms up overhead, inhale and exhale. And again, inhale up, exhale down. And one more time, inhale up and exhale down. Wonderful job, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. So if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I'd also well, actually, like to know how you're feeling, how everyone is doing after the workout. I have a question actually for you, Meg, and that is if you get up in the morning and you're not feeling like you really want to do these exercises, what do you say to yourself? How do you motivate yourself? Oh, so good. So I've got a few tips for you. The first one is if you prepare ahead of time, you're going to be more likely to succeed. So the night before, you know, okay, tomorrow I'm going to exercise, lay out your workout clothes. And if you want to go for a walk, if you want to do a workout, have all of your equipment right out ready for you. Because if you start to mentally prepare the night before, you're more likely to do it. And then the second thing is accountability. So if you do have someone you either live with or someone you can say, hey, I'm thinking about exercising in the mornings, you're more likely to do it if you tell someone and even more likely to do it if you write it down. So if you start a journal, you know, I have my journal here that I keep track of when I exercise. It's so much more motivating to see those dates of, what, of when I've done it. And then the last one, number three, is this really awesome trick, it's called the, the three, two, one rule. And uh, basically what you tell yourself is, okay, I'm gonna count down, uh, no, sorry, from five, the five second rule. I'm gonna count down from five. When I hit one, I'm going to go and exercise. So maybe you're lying in bed, thinking, oh, maybe I'll sleep in. Five, four, three, two, one, and up you go. 
and check it check it out it's uh, mel robbins is the one who coined the term the five second rule and there's all of the scientific data for why it actually works but i often do this i'll do my five three five four three two one and then i'll take action so so try those three okay. things yeah i'm sure yeah, that, that will sounds help. that sounds good one participant has asked how many times a week should we do this routine for the, some of the exercises you've talked about today Yes, great question. So it depends what you're doing, what what uh, what your main focus is. So let's say you are someone who is a gardener, you're golfing every morning, uh, or you have uh, a certain activity that you're doing. So I would say, like I mentioned, during the workout, you want to do those warm up stretches before. So that could be every day that you're doing them. It doesn't have to be an hour, but it could be 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes that you're exercising, warming up your body before you get going. And then you don't want to forget about stretching at the end of that activity. And then if you're thinking more of, okay, I just really want to regain some strength. I want to improve my balance, my mobility. I'd love to do a longer workout like this regularly. Then I would say for you, if this is new, you haven't done it in a while, aim for two days a week. And then once you get into the habit of exercising two days a week, aim for three days a week. Now, I have some people who started with me in my membership program and they were non-exercisers, really not doing much at all. And uh, they would start like that. They started with two days a week. Once they build up that routine after a month, they added a three. And now I have one woman. She's been with me for almost three years and she's up to six days a week exercising. And she said, Meg, I just feel so good when I exercise. So I have to do it. I can't skip a day. I don't feel as mentally good. I don't feel as physically good. So it is kind of amazing how, you know, it takes time to build a habit. But once you've built it, it's so much easier to maintain it. I hope that is. That's very, that's very encouraging. Now, let's say you are relatively new at fitness and, um, you feel like you pulled a muscle or something sore. What do you do? Do you persevere or do you stand back? How, how do you deal with that? Yeah, so it depends what type of injury it is. So if it's, you know, oh, I did, didn't sleep well. I think I pulled a muscle in my back as I was sleeping. You might want to ice it. You might want to, you know, take some time away from your activity or your hobby if it really tends to bother it. So, for example, if you're bending over to do your gardening and you just feel like, oh, I just can't, listen to your body. The best thing to do is listen. Typically, it takes about two to three weeks for um, for an injury to heal if it's a minor injury. So if it's like I pulled a muscle, it might take two to three weeks. After that time, if there's no change, I would recommend going to see a physiotherapist uh, or someone else who can have a look to see if there's a, a bigger issue. Now, if you know that, no, nope, this is not normal for me, This I've really injured myself, then don't delay. Do go seek help and uh, get someone to check, check into your situation. Um, but on the other side, too, you know, maybe you have a bad shoulder, maybe you have a chronic condition. And I have a, a few ladies in my membership who have recently said that, oh, Meg, this old shoulder injury is coming back. So it's nothing new, but it's it's coming back again. And what they decided was to continue to exercise, but to focus on their lower body strength and balance while this injury uh, was healing. So I encourage you to do that too. Often we think, oh, I've hurt myself. I can't do anything. But sometimes it can just be an excuse. So I do encourage you, if you are able to um See what you can do. You can still stretch. I'm sure there's something you can still do. You can maybe still walk, but don't don't quit altogether because it's so much harder to get back into your fitness routine if you if you completely quit. Yeah, and I guess one should also maybe think, well, why did I start this in the first place? Should if I want to reach this goal, then maybe I, I should keep going. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Staying connected with with what what made you exercise in the first place is huge. Just this week, I was talking to one woman. She said, Meg, I'm motivated by my grandkids. I want to be able to get down on the floor, play with them, and then get back up without difficulty. And then I know other people say, well, you know what? I'm doing this for myself. It's time I invested in my own health. And uh, I think that is so important when you when you identify the reason that, that uh, you're exercising. That will keep you going, even on the days you don't feel like it. 
That's very helpful. And I'm afraid we've run out of time today, but I'd like to thank very much today's participants and to you, Meg, for today's excellent workout. Remember to look for our follow-up email. It will include information on how to access the recording of today's session, as well as some additional information on Meg and AIM Fitness. Remember that you can invite non-members to attend our webinars and try us out as a guest. To register for upcoming webinars, please visit the Ottawa branch website at nafrottawa.com. Thank you again, everyone. See you at the next webinar, which will be Let's Talk About the Aging Foot with Sarah Dormani and Christine Rabb on April 24th. Thank you.